And good morning, everyone. Happy Monday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute, and I appreciate so very, very much you being with me. Well, I tell you what, it was a super, super hectic uh, weekend. I uh, Boy, I, I was so thrilled. On my 64 Ford Fairlane Sport Coupe, uh, I managed to get a ton of stuff done to it, made some real progress on it, and... Uh, you know, it just feels good when you're able to work on something and actually see some progress. Uh, on my 69 Mach 1 428 Cobra Jet car, I, I've just been running into one, what I call stumps. <laughs> I, I just keep running into one stump after another, and it seems like every stump I run into costs me $500. So, pardon me, uh, guess what? I don't get very many stumps overcome. Uh, it's just super, super expensive. So I have to work on this other stuff that doesn't cost me near as much money. So anyway, it was a very busy weekend and uh, a really good, relaxing weekend. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Thank you again for joining me. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you uh, the month is very, very quickly disappearing on us for you to take advantage of my two book special. This is U.S. Orders Only. All right. Uh, just remember that uh, all things. These are the days when all things must be fulfilled and seal it, vision and prophecy. Uh, when you order these two books, all right, on the special, you're also going to get free of charge a copy of my book. Can God tell time? All in all, it's going to save you about eighteen bucks. All right. So take advantage of it. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, Bible prophecy. Dot com Beautiful banner right up at the very top. Click on it. Order the books. And uh, I think that you will see how powerful, how comprehensive, how expansive the evidence is that Scripture posits the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70 as the time for the fulfillment of all, not just some, but of all prophecy. Now, we are continuing our summary and our overview of our rather lengthy study of the Olivet Discourse. Last week, last Wednesday, we touched on the abomination of desolation. Now, today's video will be somewhat repetitious of that, but it's really, really important. And there's this. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15, now, remember, this is in direct conjunction. I mean, there's no separation of 2,000 years between verse 14 and verse 15. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached into all the world as a witness to the nations. Then comes the end. And when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, let the one who reads understand, then let those who are in Judea flee. Now, this is really, as I said, critically important. Because you see, our dispensational friends say, well, the abomination of desolation uh, will appear during the seven-year tribulation period. That's still in our future. That will come after the rapture. You know, after the Lord gets rid of the church, takes the church back to heaven, begins dealing strictly and solely with Israel once again. And so the abomination of desolation is, is set up by the uh, man of sin in the middle of the seven-year tribulation period, and then ensues one of the greatest persecutions of the Jews that the world has ever seen. That's the dispensational view. Now, what's amazing, ladies and gentlemen, and you, <laughs> well, you really have to catch the power of this, while there are some in the all-millennial camp, who put the abomination of desolation in the future, they're the minority. While there may be some post-millennialists who put the abomination of desolation off in the future, they're not many. Reformed all-millennialist James Jordan says there's virtually no evidence whatsoever, and it is it is an abuse of Scripture. That's to put it very kindly. 
and different from James's words, to suggest that there is a yet coming abomination of desolation. Kenneth Gentry, postmillennialist, posits the Great Tribulation, first century. Now, Kim Riddlebarger, a millennialist, in his book, In Defense of All Millennialism, says, yes, there was an abomination in the first century, but it was typological of the end time abomination. Now, look, folks, there is, um, there's nothing in Scripture that indicates that. Absolutely nothing. I know that the branch of all millennialism in which I was personally raised says and teaches adamantly so the abomination of desolation was in the first century. So you have the majority of commentators in both the amillennial and the postmillennial uh, schools admit that the abomination of desolation occurred in the first century. Well, logically, textually, that's got to mean that the Great Tribulation occurred in the first century. When you see the abomination of desolation, flee. Pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath. Pray that it be not in the winter, etc. For then, then when, in the days of the abomination of desolation. For then shall be great tribulation, such as has never been, nor ever yet shall be. So there is a direct temporal connection between the abomination of desolation and the great tribulation. Now, here is what I want to repeat from last Wednesday's program. Former preterists, are now claiming that when Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of a Daniel the prophet, let the one who reads understand, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Or, the, excuse me, let those who are in Judea flee. And so we are told by this former preterist, Jesus was not saying that the abomination of desolation was of Jesus' day, is really anything to do with Daniel's prophecy. In other words, it is denied that Daniel foretold that in Jesus' day, there would be an abomination of desolation. No, this former preterist and, the, and his acolytes insist that the great tribulation was in the days of Antiochus, Antiochus Epiphanes, and that what Jesus was saying was, you're going to see something that will remind you of the great tribulation that occurred in the days of Antiochus Epiphanes. Forgive me for saying this is one of those argumentum ad desperatum arguments that is simply made up to avoid the power, the strength, and the truth of covenant eschatology. So again, the argument is, <clears throat> the true, the real, the only <clears throat> abomination of desolation and the only real, true great tribulation occurred in the time of Antiochus Epiphanes. And yet Jesus said that was what was coming in his day, in his generation. That his apostles would see was to be the greatest tribulation that had ever been or that ever would be. Now, wait a minute. Um, if the real abomination of desolation occurred in the time of Antiochus Epiphanes, doesn't that mean that the great tribulation, the greatest tribulation that the world had ever seen, would also have been in the time of Antiochus Epiphanes. Well, as a matter of fact, this same former preterist on Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, in those days says, well, that has to be the time of Antiochus Epiphanes. I'm not going to take the time to refute that particular aspect. I'll just call attention to the following. Daniel was told that in those days, and again, those are supposedly the days of Antiochus Epiphanes, according to this former preterist, there shall be great tribulations 
unlike anything since there was a nation or ever yet shall be. Well, here are the brutal, undeniable, absolute facts that falsify this former predator's claims. Point number one, the tribulation of the days of the destruction of Jerusalem in B.C. 586 was called a tribulation, the likes of which had never been. Daniel 9, verse 12. And let me make this observation. The tribulation of 586 B.C. made the events of Antiochus Epiphanes look like a picnic. Now, I'm not trying to say that the horrific events of the time of Antiochus Epiphanes weren't, in fact, terrible. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, comparatively speaking, when you compare the time of Antiochus Epiphanes and the crimes even the pogrom that he engaged in to exterminate the Jews, as it were, pales in significance to the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple that happened in the time of the Babylonian destruction. It is absolutely false, therefore, to apply Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, to the time of Antiochus Epiphanes, because Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 says, there had never been a tribulation like the one who's coming. But the fall of Jerusalem 586 was far greater than the events of Antiochus Epiphanes. Not only that, Jesus said, for then, when you see what was spoken of a Daniel the prophet, let the one who reads understand. For then shall be great tribulations, such as has never been, nor ever yet shall be. Now, here are the facts. This is history. Not only were it was the tribulation period, Daniel 9, 12, of B.C. 586, exponentially greater than the time of Antiochus Epiphanes, but the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70, in the war of, AD, of 66 to 70, let me say this again, it made the events of the time of Antiochus Epiphanes look like a walk in the park. There is no comparison. Antiochus Epiphanes did not destroy the, Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem. In A.D. 70, the city was leveled. Under Antiochus Epiphanes, the temple was not destroyed. In the time of Jesus, in the first century, the temple was leveled so much that Josephus, writing post facto, after the fall of Jerusalem, looking back on how severe it was, said, it was destroyed to such a level that anyone not knowing that it had been there would not know it had ever been there. Folks, listen to me. Nothing like that happened in the days of Antiochus Epiphanes. You know, Josephus even mentions for us that the city of Jerusalem was taken five times. Pay attention carefully. The city of Jerusalem was taken, conquered, captured five times. But Josephus says it was only destroyed twice by the Babylonians and by the Romans. He doesn't say that the attack by Antiochus Epiphanes approached in any way, in any comparable way, the destruction at the hands of Babylon or the Romans. So when we come to Matthew 24, verse 15, and Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken about Daniel the prophet, we're not supposed to see Daniel as predicting Jesus' day. Oh, but wait, Daniel foretold a desolation, a tribulation, such as had never been since there was a nation, 
nor ever would ever would be again. That's the language of Matthew 24, 21. It is not descriptive of the time of Antiochus Epiphanes. Now, since what Daniel foretold fits perfectly what Jesus foretold in regard to the Great Tribulation, that eliminates Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, as predictive of the time of Antiochus Epiphanes. Okay? Now, I had to take the time to do that, and I'm going to move on to the Great Tribulation uh, and a little bit more about the Abomination of Desolation in tomorrow's video. Don't forget it. I'll see you on the flip side.